In this video, we're going to learn how to use the Shape Binder tool, which is located on the Part Design Workbench. Along the way, we're also going to have to take advantage of the External Geometry tool, which is in Sketcher, and to make things convenient, we're also going to use the Carbon Copy tool, which is in Sketcher. So to get started, we're going to create a new file, a new body, and a new sketch within that body. And we're going to make this in the XY plane. Now we're going to change our grid to 10 units. Not mandatory, but it's handy. Let's draw a rectangle on the left side of the Y axis. Let's make that rectangle 25 units on this side and 40 units on this side. And let's make the rectangle symmetrical around the x-axis. We use the symmetry tool here to do that. Finally, we're going to make the rectangle 10 units to the left of the y-axis. Of course, these dimensions could be anything you like. The rectangle could be any size you like or any other shape as far as that goes. Okay, now we have our rectangle drawn. And I see here I need to correct this dimension here to 25. I inadvertently typed in 26. And we're going to quickly change our preferences. I think it will make a better video. If we go to Display, Colors, and change the background color to solid black. I think that's a little easier to see, at least it is for me. Now we're going to draw a circle within that rectangle. And we're going to make the diameter of that circle 10 units. Note, let's make that 5 units. 5 units. And now we're going to position the circle. Click on the center. Click on that vertex. And we want it to be 5 units down from the top. And let's get that dimension and move it out here so we can see it. There we go. And we're going to make it five units horizontally from that position. Five units. And we'll move that dimension out here so it can be seen easily. Let's tweak this one a little bit. Okay, now we have our basic shape, and this is all fully constrained. So we'll close this, and we want to rename the body, body number one, because we're going to be creating a second body shortly, and we want to be able to keep them straight. That's body one, and this is going to be renamed sketch one. Now we're going to create a second body. We'll do that by clicking here, clicking on the make new body tool, and we're going to make a new sketch within that. That sketch is also going to be on the XY plane. Let's go ahead and uh, close that sketch for the moment and rename this second body, body number two. So rename as opposed to the default names.
body two, and we'll do the same thing for the sketch within body two. We'll rename that sketch two, sketch hyphen two, if you will, in my case. Okay, now we have body one and body two. Body one has sketch one within it. Body two has sketch two within it. Let's open sketch two. And you'll notice we can still see body, the sketch in body number one. Let's uh, go ahead and leave that there for the moment. And we're going to make a copy of that sketch in sketch one. And we're going to paste it into sketch two. So to do that, we get our carbon copy tool, which is right here. We hold down the control key and click anywhere on sketch one. And da-da, we now have a copy of sketch one within sketch two. But uh, there's a caveat. You'll notice that these dimensions are all orange in color. What that means is these dimensions are in sketch two are controlled by the dimensions in sketch one. So while we're in sketch two, as we are now, if we attempted to change one of those dimensions, it won't let us. But there's a way that we can fix that. There's two ways. The first way is we double click the dimension and instead of just typing in a new length, we click on this little circle right here. And that opens the formula editor where we click clear. And then we click OK. And notice now this dimension has turned red and we can edit it. For instance, we could change it to 20 units wide. Or I'll control Z to undo that. I'm going to control Z again. So that's how you would change them one at a time. Here's a technique for changing all of them or multiple at the same time. Go over in the combo view, go down to your constraints, and you'll notice that some of the constraints have got a little circle by them. Those are the ones that are connected to sketch one. So we click on the first one, control click the next, 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 next. So we've selected all of them. In this case, there's six of them. We're going to right click and we're going to say toggle to from reference. You'll notice that the dimensions have all turned blue and one would think we would be done now, but actually we're not. We have to repeat that once again. So the circles are gone, but the dimensions that we're concerned with have change color. They're no longer red over here in the constraints window. So we click on the first one, control click on the second one, third one, fourth one, fifth one, and sixth one. I didn't do those in sequence, but you can see that I've selected all of them. We right click and once again say toggle to from reference and kaboom, they all turn red. So now we can change any of these dimensions here in sketch number two. Let's do one final thing. We want to move sketch number two so it's not on top of sketch number one. To move it, I'm going to delete this constraint down here at the bottom. Hit the delete key. And I'm going to drag this over to the right-hand side of the y-axis. And then I'm going to make a new constraint. I'll click on this lower left corner. And I'll click there. And a new, actually, let's try clicking on the vertex, clicking on the y-axis, setting the constraint to 10. 10 units. There we are. And let's move that dimension down here so it's not cluttering up the view too much. So now we've made our sketch one 
we created Sketch 2 and we made a copy of Sketch 1 and we uh, moved that copy within Sketch 2 over to the right hand side of the Y axis. Let's now close. Now we have our two basic sketches complete. On the left is Sketch 1 located in body number 1. On the right is Sketch 2 located in body number two. Let's momentarily go back into sketch two. Get that open. And the point I want to make here is if we wanted to reference some element of sketch two to some element of sketch one, we cannot do it at this point. To do that, we're going to have to bind shape two to shape one. And we can choose the elements that we want to bind. And the tool to do that is the shape binder tool. Remember, we have disconnected all of these dimensions from shape one so that we can change them here in shape two if we needed to. For instance, I could change this to 20 as I demonstrated earlier, but I'm going to undo that. But these dimensions are no longer connected to sketch one. So let's go ahead and use the shape binder tool to bind elements of sketch two to elements of sketch one. We'll close this. Once we have body two selected, Select the Shape Binder tool, that's this guy right here. Click on Add Geometry. Click on that circle in sketch number one. So now we can reference that circle from sketch number two. We're going to add more geometry, this top line here. And we're going to add one more to the left side of the rectangle. And we click OK. Now we're going to hide body one, click on it, hit the space bar, and you'll see we're left with the three parts of sketch one that we want to be able to reference from sketch two. So let's open sketch two. And you can see that the parts of sketch one are still visible, the parts that we related using the shape binder tool. Now that we've used the Shape Binder tool to identify the components of Sketch 1 that we need to reference from Sketch 2, and we're taking a look at this with Sketch 2 open, not done yet. We're going to have to come up and get this tool right here, which is the External Geometry tool. And we're going to have to control click on each one of these parts. Now we can reference them. As an example, let's say that we added wanted another circle on this sketch two, but we wanted it for some reason we wanted to reference that relative to this side of sketch one. So we click on the center of this new circle Click on this point right here. Click on the horizontal constraint tool. And let's make that 60 units. Six, zero. So now we have successfully been able to reference this circle in sketch two to some part of sketch one. I'm going to undo that. Delete that circle. And next, let's remove the constraints for our original circle. This guy. And this guy. Now let's click the center of this circle. And the center of this circle over in sketch one. And Let's constrain them together. 
So they are 45 units apart. Let's do one more thing. Let's again click the center of each circle. And let's click on our horizontal tool to keep them horizontal with each other. So now we've set it up so that these two circles will remain 45 units apart and they'll remain horizontal. So let's close sketch two. Let's unhide body one. Open sketch one. Let's go ahead and remove the constraints for this circle. That guy. And this guy. Now let's move this circle down here into the bottom and on the right side. And we're going to close sketch one now and see what happened in sketch two. And you'll see since these two circles are tied together, we tied them together horizontally and we made them 45 units apart. So if we move the base unit in sketch one, the unit in sketch two will also move. So we've successfully been able to use the shape binder to bind this shape in sketch one to this shape in sketch two. Let's go back to sketch one. Let's do control Z to put it back in its original position. Let's close and you'll see sketch two simultaneously move back to its initial position. Okay, now we'll do one more demonstration. Let's open sketch one. And let's remove this diameter constraint on the circle. Let's reconstrain the circle vertically and horizontally. Vertically, five units. Move that guy up there. and horizontally five units. Okay, and let's move that guy up here. Okay, let's close sketch one and open sketch two. Let's remove the diameter in sketch two. Okay, now let's click the circle in sketch two and in sketch one. And let's click the equal constraint. Now let's close sketch two, open sketch one, change the diameter of the circle and go back and see if it had the same effect on sketch two. And indeed it did. So now we've constrained the diameter of the circles to be equal at all times. So we can undo that. And I think for the purposes of this demonstration on how to use the shape binder tool, this concludes this exercise. Thank you for watching.